Hello everybody. Today is Throwback Thursday. And for the people that don't know my channel, I usually try to do something on Thursday that is related to something from the past. That's all. And what I want to do today is gardening with wood chips. Basically, that's what I want to talk about. The difference between with and without and how Gary's garden has grown in three years. I am now in my garden. There is Gary's garden. His is down the hill because our property has a hill drop and so he built his garden down the hill and as you can see he is in there working and mine's up on top by the house and I'm still working in my garden. I'm actually planting new plants and let's kind of walk through and still getting new seedlings growing. There's some zucchini. I don't want this is not a garden tour. This is just showing you this is my garden and a lot of it is stuff that's been in here for years. There's my sprouting broccoli, it's gone to seed. So I have very little leaves on it. I have more seeds. Everything actually has gone to seed. But I want the, you to see the difference between growing in containers and growing in wood chips that are now established in the back to Eden fashion, like Paul Gauchi does and like a lot of people do. Here, Gary did lay wood chips probably only about two years. I'm really bad on time. Time moves so fast. But in the beginning, I was reluctant and I didn't want it. So mine was clay soil. And we'll see some clay soil, I think, as we walk down the Gary's garden. But I was doing a lot of container gardening, which I happen to like. I personally like container gardening. And I had these old dog kennels that I set up and I have produced tons of food for us. So I like container gardening. Now, of course, I also plant in the ground. And this, of course, is my mint that people say, no, no, not on the ground. But you know what? It doesn't bother me. This is spearmint. And we use a lot of spearmint, especially in the summer when it's hot. We make a lot of mint tea, that with stevia. The collard is in the ground. It might have been in a pot at one point, but it broke through. It's in the ground. That's about three years old. And that's all seeding right now. So it's all basically stressed. It's just seeding. And then, of course, the dazzling blue kale. That's got seeds growing. That is both. I have one in the ground. As you can see, I planted it in the brick down there. Let me see if I can show you. And then this one is in this tiered pot. So it's doing really good. And it's, it's nice. I, I have no complaints. I think it's beautiful. And then, of course, my tree collards. And let's see. That, too, are in the ground. That one was in a pot, and it left. But look at it. I think it's like eight, nine feet tall now. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. A piece broke off. I'm going to cut that into sections, and I'm going to root it. But I want to show you Gary's garden. I'm trying to figure out which way would be more exciting to walk down. You know what? Maybe we'll take the back way. And this is my garden. So it's a combination of containers and in the ground. But I think we'll go the back way because we can see his bees that came to Gary. And let's open the gate and go through. And we can compare the two gardens because that's what's interesting. We both have our own microclimates. So we do grow different. Isn't that beautiful? The citrus trees have been flowering and there's thousands of fruit on them now. Let's go by. We're gonna walk by the papayas that are doing really good. We did have a problem where something got up there and nibbled it. So he put some tool on that and that stopped that problem immediately. They don't like climbing up the tool, that netting, that real fine netting. And there's my truck bed. Let's walk over there. So here's the truck bed. And I guess you could call that a raised bed. And that was here. We didn't put it here. It was here with the property and we decided to use it. We tried to get rid of it. Nobody wanted it. So we filled it one day with just all kinds of stuff from the yard. And we've been growing all kinds of things for the past few years in there. And right now we have Swiss chard growing. We have green, we have red, we have the green and red variety. Look at the leaves. Remember these leaves. Now, yes, it is going to seed, but I want you to remember the size of the leaves. This is a raised bed. And I do know that avocado tree is going to have to go. It did not fruit. So now we're going to walk down. Let's take a walk down the Gary's garden and see the difference. Now he is mainly growing straight into the wood chips. That's his main thing. And that's what I want you to see. What happens to food? Well, I should say not just food, but the, the greens that you're growing and the plants that you're growing after the wood chips have broken down. So now we're going to hike the back way. He's got two ways. He's got a stairway he built, and then he's got the back way. I call it the back way. 
because I have to walk further past my garden. See, my garden is way down there. And this way he can drive his truck up and down. So let's hike down. And yes, this is the truck bed that the baby rabbits were raised in this year. Now we're down on the hill now where he put his bees. These are the bees. We did a whole video on that that literally came to him. Look at this. I'll put a link to the video on how his bees came to him and how he ended up with them here because this is not where they came. Oh, there's a squirrel up there. They came in a different area where he had to climb a palm tree to get that owl box out that he made. And he brought it over here full of bees and moved it here. Now he tells me he wants a bee suit after he's moved them. But anyways. Let's keep going to Gary's garden, but I just wanted to stop and share the bees with you. And he's waiting when they split off that he's turned that barbecue into a beehive. So he's hoping they'll split off so then we'll have more bees. Okay, let's keep going. So this is again the path that will take me to Gary's garden. We have two acres is what it is. That's why it seems like there's so much land. There is. And we're using such a very small portion when it comes to gardening. Very small portion. Because a lot of it we just don't use. But this is where we decided to build our garden. Isn't this beautiful down here? Literally can make, take a nature hike, which my family does when they come here on the property. Because look at all the trees. And there's a little gully here down here. And when it rains, there's a runoff. And we've got all kinds of stuff growing down here. It's so beautiful. Loquats. There's a few left. Gary's been bringing me in low quads. They're so good. I actually am thinking of planting more trees. But yes, you can go on a nature trail. And there is Gary's garden. Now, keep in mind, this wasn't here, I guess you could say about four years ago. And I'll show you, you'll see the photos of what this looked like. This was all clay soil. Nothing but clay. It was pretty much impossible to grow in. Trees would grow, but that would be basically it. You wouldn't be able to grow vegetables. You wouldn't be able to grow anything like that. And long story short, when uh, Gary decided to go totally gluten-free, wanted to go healthier, he wanted to start a garden, and he did research. And that's when he found out about the Back to Eden method. And he started, you know, you can look at the old videos, the whole story's there on how he started with a little pickup truck bringing in all the wood chips until he got the big companies starting to deliver to him. And the whole story, I'll try to get all the links up. But here are raspberries that he planted and blackberries. Well, you know what, let's get Gary out here. Because to be honest, I rarely come down here. I have so much work to do up on top that I come down here maybe to grab some food. Are these raspberries and blackberries? I think they're a combination of both. So you, you planted both? I planted both. Okay, so we have blackberries and raspberries. And then, okay, we, you know, I've done the garden tour, so we don't really have to do that. So that's what I just wanted to see. Boy, these leaves got big. Look at the size of these leaves. They're massive. Yeah, they're doing really well this year. I severed the roots from the pepper trays. Wow. Okay, let's go in your garden. What I want to see mainly are the greens that you've got growing because that's something I told everybody, watch and see the size of mine compared to yours. So let's go and see your Swiss chart. Now all this jungle in here is straight into the ground and straight into which is, I don't even think I can get in there. Let's see if I can look at the leaves. This is the difference between growing, look at the leaves, growing in wood chips straight in the ground and container gardening. Now, yes, you can compost in place and you can buy food too. I do not buy plant food anymore, but 
that is the difference once you've got the wood chips all established you end up oh my goodness you know what i might break this one off and use it for breakfast and then you can show it let's see if we can break this off here i'm going to hand it to you so you can show the size look at that Look at that, and there, and you've got bigger than that too. Yeah, I've got a lot bigger than that. I've got green ones. Yeah, tucked away in there, the ones that I don't get to are probably bigger. Well, how do you get in there? I just walk through it. And they've got such big leaves, and they're well, they're seeding. Okay, the ones that are seeding have smaller leaves too. Let's kind of wind around and see what he's got going in there. Oh, you've got some baby plants on the ground I might grab at some point and plant. Oh, look at the artichokes. Don't let them open. We want to eat them before they open. Okay, I can't get back there. Yeah, actually, that's, that's about the size they are right now. That is big. And all this, everything in this area is straight in the ground in the wood chips that are, what, 8 to 12 inches? 8 to 12 inches, yes. Well broke down, beautiful soil. Look at that. Now I know not everybody can do that, but boy, if you can get wood chips and you have a yard, you will need a yard to have the wood chips. You can go, oh, you've got artichokes on the bottom too. Yeah, that one's leaning down, I say. I didn't straighten it up, but it's heading towards the sun again. Wow, that is gorgeous. Look at the size of those leaves. So you've got a real jungle in here all because of the wood chips. Yeah, well, this is all, the only compost here is wood chips. You don't use any plant food? No, not here. This is just wood chips, fungal dominated compost. All the, all the leafy stuff that I trim from here go under the bananas. That I do use the green compost. So the only plant food that the banana plants are getting are just the leaves that are... The leaves, and then I put the wood chips on top of the leaves. So they're getting a combination of both. Okay, because the second you cover the leaves with wood chips, they start to break down. All the microbes and earthworms and everything will come. Yeah. And that, that I, I do know that. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. And that's the difference if you have a yard and you want to go in the back to Eden style. Now, Paul Gauchi has everything, as you said... Yeah, he likes things uniform, and I like things unruly or wild. Yeah, he keeps everything in a line, straight, beautiful. And, and that's, you know, everybody does their garden the way they want. And with Gary, he just lets it grow. Basically, it, if the seeds drop and they grow, then that's where they're going to grow. Unless he doesn't want it there, he'll either move them or chop it out and use it for compost. Yeah, if they're small enough, like there's some dill that's come up along the walkway. I you should, can show us the dill. I should really move some of the dill because I keep stepping on it. Look at the pepinos. He's got them wrapped in uh, this pink or coral or red tulle. Look at that. And like you said, you keep finding I'm going to break your plant. You keep finding them and finding them. Okay, I see the difference between the red. So that's red tulle. Yeah, the red tool is a little coarser, but it definitely stands out. It does stand out more. But they both stand out. I'm happy with the coral. I would go with the red next time maybe, but the coral works good too. Maybe I should just get some red tool. It's so cheap right now online. And I'm really happy with the tool. It, uh, it's been about $10 for 40 yards, 54 inches wide. You can't beat that. Free shipping and no tax. Yeah. All right. Wow, we were going to your, oh, you have dill down here. Yeah, I'll have to move that one because I keep, there were more and I keep stepping on them. So, well, my rocket or arugula is going to seed here. Oh, you can So that's going rocket. to self-seed and come back next year. You've got lemon verbena down here too, I see. Yeah, that's my lemon verbena. And celery? You got a celery, big celery yep. there too. Oh, there's your lemon verbena. Yeah. It, it didn't change, it didn't go dormant during the winter. Oh, pretty that's much, right, yours didn't. Pretty, pretty much stayed green, it didn't put on any new growth. It's putting on new growth now, but it just sort of sat, which was good. It's sheltered in this area. 
It must have been a little warmer because mine did go dormant and it's coming back now. It pretty much went dormant. But see, you even have big leaves being in straight in the wood chips, not in, like I showed the truck bed, uh, with it seeding. It still has yeah, it's still bigger leaves than mine. Got good size edible leaves, even though it is going to seed. And there's your tree collards back there, but they've all pretty much fallen down and they're growing sideways now. Yeah. Can't even get in there. I, boy, a month ago I could walk in there. I see some purple Russian blue kale or some purple kale back there, curly kale. Yeah. My leeks here are going to seed. Oh, these are leeks. Yeah. Okay. And with the weeds, it's just a matter of... So that's compost. And I'm done with that. And what, were you going to show something over here? Or, or was that the, just the dill we were going to look at? And just, just the dill. That, well, there's more dill. It comes up as a volunteer everywhere. So all along here, I really need to take these out because they're getting stepped on. To show, oh, you got keep, more. Oh, I dill. keep stepping on it. So this is a good example. You just dig it up and put it where, out of the way where you need it. You have more dill growing around the corner. Around the corner too. And this is just seeds that are fallen and just come up where they feel like coming up. Yeah, this is this is seeds from a stalk that I just stuck a flower flowering stalk or a seeding stalk I just stuck in the ground there. It was from your garden. Oh, you mean when it was dried out or dried out seed stalk? I just left it. You just stuck just in the it. stalk, dried out, and let the seeds fly yep. where they may. Cool. And then there's your pond, and there's your bananas. How old are your banana trees? I know they're not trees; they're plants. But how old are? They? Are they two years old or three years old? Two to three years old. Right? Two to three years old. Wow. This is beautiful. What a difference. I mean, we could not grow anything with the soil that we had before. Over here, the other thing about growing bananas, the um, oriole nest is up there. Oh, the oriole nest? Yeah. Can we see it from here? Yeah. Oh, there it is. The it's house, in there? It's in there, the house finch nest we were looking at. It's yeah. right there. And we didn't even notice the oriole nest three feet away. Wow, so there's the Oriole nest. I, it's very dark right now. It's hard to see, but this is where they come all day. I can just, let me see if I can just barely see. Oh, wow, this time you can see it. That's really cool. Um, okay, so now this is, this is your sweet potatoes growing in the wood chips. Yeah, this is my sweet potatoes, and the purple yams had just started. I dug some up there. There's, you can see them on the other side. They're just starting to shoot again. Are you taking off the old brown yeah, stuff or are you going to leave it? No, I have to take off the old last year's growth. I'll just take the hooks down and take it off. Okay, but right. right now I'm I'm doing other things, so I haven't gotten to it see yet. See if I can see the hook. I can't see the hook with the banana leaf. Okay, and then you hook it. Let's see. Go yeah, ahead I and just, Yeah, I'm in a really bad spot, so I, I can't go back the anymore. Last year's vine and it comes straight off. Wow, you could do this for anything. You could do this for uh, peas and, and beans and cucumbers and just have a bar and then the bent rebar. you got a video on this, right? See if I can find it. Yeah, I believe so. And then you can just hang it and you can just easily, boy, that's easy to clean and stuff. Yeah, it's easy to clean. That's ready to go for a new season. So the whole idea is gardening easy. Right, and that's what we all do here, the two of us, is we do garden easy and and quite successful. I, mean, I haven't bought, a, there's very little produce I buy, if any. Now this is, what do you want to show me well, here? This is the soil underneath the wood chips. I dug this yam out and I'm going to backfill it with a mixture of sand and clay and then put more wood chips over and plant another yam here. But this is one that I harvested to eat. I actually got to this one, some of the others I haven't. I've just left them in the soil. Which means they could be 20, 30, 40 pounds bigger? Yeah, they could be pretty big by now. Oh my gosh. Well, and all this is straightened wood chips. Now behind me, this is a raised bed. Is there wood chips in this? Yeah, there was wood chips on the top. There's not, now it's sort of broken down, but I'm going to redo this bed too. And you've got, that's fennel? That's fennel, and that's coming up all over the place. Oh, yeah. That's self-seeded across here. That's just wild fennel. 
Wow. To think you could not grow anything, what, three, four years ago down here at all? Yeah, there, there was absolutely no real soil. It was bedrock, basically. Yeah, there was no way to, all you did was just, I guess even before, people just used it for a place to store stuff. I've even had neighbors around me tell me they can't grow a garden in Southern California because the soil's so bad. But you could, there's always ways to grow a garden, always. Are you looking for something? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the bricks, which I use as a marker. Oh. And that lets me know where the other yam is. And this oh, look is at it, it's growing. The new growth coming up. Let me see if I can get past your shoulder. Move the leaf. Oh, look at that. Don't move it. I'll see if I can zoom in. Wow, and that's just going to, and that's the yam. Yeah, that's the yam. And you have no idea how big it is underneath. No, I don't. It's got all these little fingers coming off. Oh, look. So you can move those. I can move those, plant them somewhere else. So, so that's a tuber that I can plant. So it shoot, it sends off small tubers on it too as well? Yeah, it looks like a hand. Okay. So this variety does. Some of them just are more bulbous, but this variety is more like a hand. So each one's different, is what you're saying. Yeah, okay. each one's different, and that's... Wow, so red, purple, so deep pur And you're sticking it back? Well... You're going to move it, right? I'm, I'm going to move it, but for now I'm just going to set it back. So you got it marked with a brick near it, so you know where they are. Yeah, and that... My intention was to dig them all up, but I didn't get to it this year. Wow, well... well Pretty much, I think that's what I wanted to show. And we could walk over to your ponds, but today it was basically on things growing in the wood chips. See the wood chips all over the ground? And they, even my raised beds, this is an example of what I do with the wood chips. I put it on top. I need to top this up a little more. Now, when it comes to wood chips, we're not talking about the wood chips you buy at the big box stores in bags. That, when you buy them in bags, that's decorative wood chips. They come in black, they come in natural, they come in red, they come in colors. Those wood chips are treated and those are colored. You don't want that. You need wood chips that are coming straight off of trees. And it really doesn't matter what type of tree, does it? No, it doesn't matter. Once it breaks down, it's neutralized. It becomes neutral. Paul, Sorry. go on. No, I didn't. I thought you were done. Go ahead. So anything that you might think is toxic, say eucalyptus or olive. Uh, oleander or oak or anything like that, when it breaks down, it becomes neutral. So this is breaking down. Whatever this plant was, if it had anything toxic in it, it's already gone. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. <laughs> so now I don't have the question. Because people have asked, can you use walnut? Because they thought it was toxic. Can you use oleander? Now oleander, you really haven't gotten any oleander, have you? No, I haven't. Okay, but as far as uh, any type like walnut, you've had walnut come in, I've in here. Walnut. I've had quite a few different trees. Ash trees. Ash trees. Pine. Pine. Avocado breaks. trees. Avocado. It all breaks down. It's so whatever they bring you, and a lot of times we have found the walnuts in there, so we know it's walnuts. In fact, did you have any trees come up from the walnuts? I've had a, a pecan. Trees. We had a pecan come up in the other side we've of the had yard. A pecan. We've had a few different trees come up. Some of them I'm not sure what they were. Ash trees seem to produce a lot of seed and we've had a lot of ash trees come up. So that's the garden. So don't go running to the store to buy bags of wood chips. That is not the right wood chips. What you would need to do if you really, really wanted to get into it is call your tree arborists, tree trimmers, maybe even some gardeners that go as far as taking trees out if they've got a shredder a, 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 wood chipper. a wood chipper then you know that's where you would get the wood chips from you want it straight off the tree and you don't want just the branches you want the whole tree when they trim the tree out even if they're just topping the tree and they're cutting trees down they shred it you want the leaves the small branches all the whole thing oh, this is it's green and brown basically at that point yeah and even if you not they only will deliver a truckload. If you don't need that much, you might be able to find someone in your neighborhood or 
area that I don't know if you put something online or in the paper you might be able to get a couple of people together and if you only need half a truck and someone else needs half a truck you get a load delivered somewhere and then you split it. There's ways, there's options out there to get the wood chips. You used to run after the tree trimmers and load up your small truck in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning I would chase, chase them around, around the neighborhood every time I heard a wood chipper. He was the wood chip chaser, you know, chasing down all the wood chippers. And then finally they started bringing him here, but to the point, oh my gosh, I'll have to go back and look at the old videos. If we weren't home, they started dumping the loads in the front yard in the yeah. street. And let's just say there were people around here that weren't happy. We did get them to stop that. Yeah, I've got most of my piles moved. I've got a few left, but as, I, as they sit, they break down. So that gives me compost that I can put on my raised beds. Now you're still moving these piles that are behind us here? Yeah, those piles behind us are being moved and then what's left on the ground is going to be probably an orchard. Some sort of trees will probably go in there. Well, are you moving more wood chips in here as you move it? Yes, I'll fill the pathways up and I'll also top up my new raised pond beds. Okay, so you're still working in here. I'm still so you're gonna, working on here. You're going to add in a lot more wood chips. Yep. Wow. Are you doing anything with that or are you going to leave that jungle? Because that's beautiful. That jungle will stay. Perfect. That will be the way it is. I'll add wood chips to it and that's going to stay that way. Then I'll have raised beds scattered around because there's a good um, reason to have both. Well, not everybody can do the wood chip, the back to Eden, because you really do need some sort of space, unless you want to do a little bit. I mean, if you had a small yard and you want to do container gardening and put wood chips on top, because it adds so many nutrients to the soil, you could stop a tree trimmer and ask for some, bring, keep some bags in your car if you're driving around and load up, ask if you, they'll load up some bags for you. And they probably would. Yeah, they might. And then you can bring a little bit home, but otherwise, yeah, you would have to find something. We have a friend that could not get the wood chips in their yard. So they ended up having the wood chips dumped in the neighbor's yard, didn't they? Yeah. And then they all took wood chips because they had a way to get the truck in there and dump it. And the other property did not. So there's ways of doing it if you want wood chips. I just take from Gary if I'm going to use it or I'll dig out... I'll go sometimes under the wood chips and dig down and then take and use that in my containers. It looks just like the bag stuff you buy, like the garden soil you buy. It's already broke down here. The difference is it's full of earthworms. Yeah, a good example would be my, my pile with the other side there is broken down nicely. Right well, here, this is just... Should we walk over there real yeah, we, quick? We All right, I'll follow you. That's asparagus. I ate one yesterday. Look at the purple asparagus. They like the wood chips. And I like the asparagus. Now this down at the bottom here, that's broken down. That's nice humus. Oh, look at that. And you could just sift this if you want, sometimes I do, just to get the larger pieces out. And then this is already pretty much broken down. This basically would be the same things you would buy at the big box stores called garden soil. Yeah. Not potting soil because that's got the perlite and different things in it, but uh, garden soil does not. Yeah, the, what you get in, and the stuff you buy in the bags, the potting soil, won't be as fine as what you can get if you're doing it yourself. Because they need to manufacture it and sell it and get it a higher turnover. I can let it sit for a oh, while. I see the white growing in there too, and that's the fungi, right? Yeah. And that's good for the plants. Look that's, at that. That's good for the plants. 
That's why it's called fungal, or some people call it fungal dominated compost. That's part of the process. Wow. So that's already broke down, so I know where I can come get some if I want now. Yeah, this is a volunteer tomato that came up last year. It survived last summer and it survived last winter and it's got a lot of green tomatoes on it and I'm just going to take it and stake it up to this frame that I made. So this is growing in wood chips too. Another one came up in another part of the yard that didn't have the wood chips and it didn't make it through the last summer. This one did so obviously this has got a good spot and I think because of the wood chip covering, they kept it moist, so it was able to grow down here. Wow, so I've got a lot of photos that I've got. We didn't take a whole lot of photos or videos at the time before we set up, but I'm dropping in as many as I've got or I could find right now to show the difference. And this thing was here. I'm not even sure what this was. I think, I, I don't know, I think they use it for storage. But um, now we're using it as a garden. And it's just worked out beautiful. Look at this, the greens growing here. We saw it from the other side. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's see if I can lift it up. Look down this way. Everything you see right here is all growing straight into wood chips. It would never have been able to grow in the clay. Yeah, this is a six foot chain link fence. So that flower spike there would have to be 10 foot tall. Oh my gosh, it's 10 foot tall and that's what? That's Swiss chard. Swiss chard. It really likes the wood chips. Beautiful. Well, I guess with that, just wanted to come down and, and show what has happened over the past few years. Let's walk over here real quick before I end it. And there's his garden. And you got, this is all sweet potatoes trying to escape. Yeah, that. I noticed at a certain point the sweet potatoes are vigorous enough that the rabbits won't bother with it. So these are already escaped. When they're tiny, the rabbits will eat it, but then the sweet potatoes just take over and they can't keep up with them. Oh, so the rabbits aren't eating that anymore. All right, well, I guess with that, I've kind of wanted to, this is a good throwback just to show what wasn't here a few years ago and what is here. So I think I've, I don't know what else to really say on this because this is basically just the walk around and showing the Back to Eden style gardening. So have a great day, everybody. Don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.